have the sincere pleasure in inviting you now to confer on the Reverend Jesse Jackson the degree of Doctor Honoris Causa. By the authority vested in me, I admit you to the degree. Reverend Jesse Jackson, welcome to Edinburgh. How good to be here tonight. How does it feel to have received an honorary degree from the University of Edinburgh? Well, I'm humble and honored and feel inspired to keep working. After all, it is the work and the days when the cameras are not around. It is the sacrifices made for a struggle to make humanity more secure, that has enabled us to be here tonight. And so I thank the University for recognizing our work. You've obviously worked for so many decades for the causes which you obviously believe in so strongly, do you feel that you are much closer now to the sort of equality that you've espoused when you first started? Well, we won some victories and there have been some setbacks. We have public accommodations. We no longer live on the legal apartheid. We have the right to vote. We are elected to offices. And yet the resistance to progress is a very stern resistance. And so it's, it's a give and take world. And so in the tug of war for the soul of our nation, and the peace in the world, you can't turn the rope loose. Universities matter so much. In the end, people do not know. It's important for people to, to care that you know. They really want to know that you care. The University of Edinburgh has the Global Justice Academy, which I, I think you've been um, discussing with some of the colleagues here in Edinburgh. How strongly do you feel that the work of universities like Edinburgh can help with the sort of aims that you have? They must inspire young people to become their full selves as they mature. I shall never forget once while debating at Columbia University, Barack Obama, then student, now president of the United States, was in the audience and he said that he saw the debate and he said this idea of a black becoming president can happen. So the university so seeds and gives us a hope for a world not yet. That's its highest and best mission. You mentioned Barack Obama there. He's coming to the end of his second term, the first African-American president. Are you worried? Are you concerned? Are you hopeful for the future with whoever wins the presidency next time? I am hopeful for the future because there are some victories that we have achieved that we are not going to give up. We're not going to turn, but we're going to keep fighting for the right to vote. We're going to keep fighting for affordable health. We're going to keep fighting to build coalitions. We're going to keep rejecting racism and balancing in many manifestations. And so no matter what, there is a headwind, and yet we, we, will, we, will, we will journey on and we will prevail.